Hello everyone, my name is Tuan Anh. I've been using Emacs for about 10 years. Today I'm going to talk about Resitter, a new Emacs package that allows Emacs to parse multiple programming languages in real time. So, what is the problem statement? In order to support programming functionalities for a particular language, a text editor needs to have some degree of language understanding. Traditionally, text editors have relied very heavily on regular expressions for this. In Emacs is no different. Most language major modes use regular expressions for syntax highlighting, code navigation, folding, indexing, and so on. Regular expressions are problematic for a couple of reasons. They're slow and inaccurate. They also make the code hard to read and write. Sometimes it is because the regular expressions themselves are very hairy, and sometimes because they are just not powerful enough, some helper code is usually needed to parse more intricate language features. That also illustrates the core problem with regular expressions, in that they are not powerful enough to parse programming languages. An example feature that regular expressions cannot handle very well is string interpolation which is a very common feature in many modern programming languages. It would be much nicer if Emacs somehow had structural understanding of source code, like IDEs do. There have been multiple efforts to bring this kind of programming language understanding into Emacs. There are language-specific parsers written in Elisp. They can be thought of as the next logical step of the glue code on top of regular expressions moving from partial local pattern recognition into a full-fledged parser. The most prominent example of this approach is probably the famous JS2 mode. However, this approach has several issues. Parsing is computationally expensive, and ImageLift is not good at that kind of stuff. Furthermore, maintenance is very troublesome. In order to work on these parsers, first you have to know at least well enough and then you have to be comfortable with writing a recursive descendant parser while constantly keeping up with changes to the language itself, which can be evolving very quickly, like JavaScript, for example. Together, these constraints significantly reduce the pool of potential maintainers. The biggest issue, though, in my opinion, is the lack of the set of generic and reusable APIs. This makes them very hard to use for minor modes that want to deal with cross-cutting concerns across multiple languages. The other approach, which has been gaining a lot of momentum in recent years, is externalizing language understanding to another process, also known as language server protocol. This second approach is actually a very interesting one. By decoupling language understanding from the editing facility itself, the OSP servers can attract a lot more contributors, which makes maintenance easier. However, they also have several issues of their own. Being a separate process, they are usually more resource intensive, and depending on the language, the OSP server itself can bring with it a host of additional dependencies external to Emacs, which can be messy to install and manage. Furthermore, JSON over RPC has pretty high latency for one-off tasks like jumping to source or on-demand completion is great, but for things like code highlighting, that latency is just too much. I was using Rust and I was following the community effort to improve its ID support, hoping to integrate some of that into Emacs itself. Then I heard someone from the community mention TreeSitter and I decided to check it out. Basically, TreeSitter is an incremental parsing library and a parser generator. It was introduced by the Adam editor in 2018. Besides Adam, it is also being integrated into the NeoVim editor. And GitHub is using it to power their source code analysis and navigation features. It is written in C and can be compiled for all major platforms. It can even be compiled to WebAssembly to run on the web. That's how GitHub is using it on their website. 
So why is Tracita an interesting solution to this problem? There are multiple features that make it an attractive option. It is designed to be fast by being incremental. The initial parts of a typical big file can take tens of milliseconds, while subsequent incremental parses are sub-millisecond. It achieves this by using structural sharing, meaning reparsing only affected nodes in the old tree when it needs to. Also, unlike LSP, being in the same process, it has much lower latency. Secondly, it provides a uniform programming interface. The same data structures and functions work on past trees of different languages. Syntax nodes of different languages differ only by their types and their possible child nodes. This is a big advantage over language-specific parsers. Thirdly, it's written in self-contained embeddable C. As I mentioned previously, it can even be compiled to WebAssembly. This makes integrating it into various editors quite easy, without having to install any external dependencies. One thing that is not mentioned here is that, being a parser generator, its grammars are declarative. Together with being editor independent, this makes the pool of potential contributors much larger. So I was convinced that TreeSitter is a good fit for Emacs. Last year, I started writing the bindings using dynamic model support introduced in Emacs 25. Dynamic model means there is platform specific native code involved. But since there are pre-compiled binaries for the three major platforms, it should work in most places. Currently, the core functionalities are in a pretty good shape and syntax highlighting is working nicely. The whole thing is split into three packages. TreeSitter is the main package that other packages should depend on. TreeSitter Langs is the language bundle that includes support for the most common languages. And finally, the core APIs are in the package TSC, which stands for TreeSitter Core. It is the implicit dependency of the TreeSitter package. The main package includes the minor mode TreeSitter mode. This provides the base for other major or minor modes to build on. Using Emacs change tracking hooks, it enables incremental parsing and provides a syntax tree that is always up to date after any edits in a buffer. There's also a basic debug mode that shows the parse tree in another buffer. Uh, here is the quick demo. Here I'm in an empty Python buffer with tree sitter enabled. I'm going to turn on the debug mode to see the parse tree. Since the buffer is empty, there is only one node in the syntax tree, the top level module node. Let's try typing some code. As you can see, as I type into the Python buffer, the syntax tree updates in real time. The other minor mode included in the main package is TreeSitter HL mode. It overrides font lock mode and provides its own set of faces and customization options. It is query driven, that means instead of regular expressions, it uses a Lisp like query language to map syntax nodes. To highlighting faces. I'm going to open a Python file with small snippets that showcase syntax highlighting. So this is the default highlighting provided by Python mode. 
This is the highlighting enabled by tree sitter. As you can see, st string interpolation and decorators are highlighted correctly. Function calls are also highlighted. You can also note that property accessors and property assignments are highlighted differently. What I like the most about this is that new bindings are consistently highlighted. This included local variable, function parameters, and property mutations. Before going through the three queries and the syntax highlighting customization options, let's take a brief look at the core data structures and functions that TreeSitter provides. So parsing is done with the help of a generic parser object. A single parser object can be used to parse different languages by assigning different language objects to it. The language objects themselves are loaded from shared libraries. Since TreeSitter mode already handles the parsing part, we will instead focus on the functions that inspect nodes and in the resulting parse tree. We can ask tree sitter what is the syntax node at point. Uh, is it an opaque object? So this is not very useful. We can instead ask uh, what is its type. So its type is the symbol comparison operator. In TreeSitter, there are two kinds of nodes, anonymous nodes and named nodes. Anonymous nodes correspond to simple grammar elements like keywords, operators, punctuations, and so on. Named nodes, on the other hand, are grammar elements that are interesting enough on their own to have a name, like an identifier, an expression, or a function definition. Name node types are symbols, while anonymous node types are strings. For, for example, if we are on this comparison operator, the, the node type should be a string. We can also get other information about the node. For example, what is its text? or where it is in the buffer. Or what is its parent? There are many other APIs to query a node's properties. TreeSitter allows searching for structural patterns within a parse tree. It does so through a Lisp-like language. This language supports pattern matching by node types, field names, and predicates. It also allows capturing nodes for further processing. Let's try to see some examples. So in this uh, very simple query, we just try to highlight all the identifiers in the buffer. This SI tells TreeSitter to capture the node. In the context of the query builder, it's not very important, but in normal highlighting query, 
this will determine the face used to highlight the node. Suppose we want to capture all the function names instead of just any identifier. We can improve the query like this. Uh, this will highlight the whole definition, but we only want to capture the function name, which means the identifier here. So we move the capture to after the identifier node. If we want to capture the class names as well, we just add another pattern. Let's look at a more practical example. Uh, here we can see that uh, single quote strings and double quote strings are highlighted the same, but in some places, because of some coding conventions, it may be desirable to highlight them differently. For example, if the string is single quoted, we may want to highlight it as a constant. Let's try to see whether we can distinguish these two cases. So here we get all the strings. If we want to see if it's single quote or double quote strings, We can try looking at the first character of the string, I mean the first character of the note, to, and check whether it's a single quote or a double quote. Yeah, so for that we used uh, TreeSitter's support for predicate. In this case, we use a match predicate to check whether the string, the, whether the note starts with a single quote. And with this pattern, we only capture the single quote strings. Let's try to give it a different face. So we copy the pattern. We add this pattern for Python only. But we also want to uh, give the capture a different name. Let's say we want to highlight it as a keyword. Now if we refresh the buffer, we see that single quote strings are highlighted as uh, keywords. The highlighting patterns can also be set for a single project using directory local variables. Uh, for example, let's take a look at uh, Emacs source code. So in Emacs C source, there are a lot of uh, uses of these uh, different macros to define functions, but you can see uh, this is actually the function name, but it's highlighted as the string. So what we want 
is to somehow recognize this button and highlight it uh, as highlight this part with a function phrase instead. In order to do that, uh, we put a button in this project uh, directory local settings file. So we can put this button in the C mode section and now if we enable tree sitter you can see that this is the highlighted uh, as a normal function definition so this is the function phrase like we wanted the pattern for this is actually pretty simple. It's only uh, only this part. So, if it's a function call where the name of the function is different, then we highlight the different as a keyword, and then the first string argument we highlight it as a function name. Since the language objects are actually native code, they have to be compiled for each platform that we want to support. This could become a big obstacle for tree sitter adoption. Therefore, I've created the language bundle package tree sitter langs that takes care of pre compiling the grammars, the most common grammars, for all three major platforms. It also takes care of distributing these binaries and provide some highlighting queries for some of the languages. It should be noted that this package should be treated as a temporary distribution mechanism only to help with bootstrapping tree sitters adoption. The plan is that eventually these files should be provided by the language major modes themselves. But in order to do that, we need better tooling, so we're not there yet. Since the core already works reasonably well, there are several areas that would benefit from the community's contribution. So, tree sitters upstream language repositories already contain highlighting queries on their own. However, they are pretty basic, and they may not fit well with existing Emacs conventions. Therefore, the language bundle has its own set of highlighting queries. This requires maintenance until language major modes adopt tree sitter and maintain the queries on their own. The queries are actually quite easy to write, as you've already seen. Uh, you just need to be familiar with the language, familiar enough to come up with sensible uh, highlighting patterns. Uh, and if you are a man maintainer of a language major mode, you may want to consider integrating tree sitter into your mode. Uh, initially, maybe as an optional feature. The integration is uh, actually pretty straightforward, especially for syntax highlighting. Uh, alternatively, uh, you can also try writing a new major mode from scratch that relies on tree sitter from the very beginning. The code for such a major mode is uh, quite simple. Uh, for example, this is the, the proposed uh, what mode for a web assembly. The code is uh, just uh, like one page of code, not read, uh, not a lot. Uh, you can also try writing new minor modes or writing integration packages. Uh, for example, a lot of package, uh, a lot of packages may benefit from tree sitter integration, but uh, no one has written the integration yet. 
if you are interested in three seater you can use these links to learn more about it i think that's it for me today i'm happy to answer any question